Hello class and welcome to this Robin Hood Prince of Thieves NES walkthrough right here on Video Games 101 by way of Let's Play with Brigands. I'm your instructor, Professor Brigands, and this is one of the more underappreciated and more unknown games for the NES. It's a slight hidden gem, I'm not going to call it the, uh, the best kept secret on the NES, but it is certainly good and it's certainly better than I think most people would say it has any business being. One of the better film adapted NES games for certain. But uh, in terms of difficulty, I'm going to go ahead and give Robin Hood Prince of Thieves a 5 out of 10, which on the frustration scale equates to throwing your controller across the room. This will happen if you ever die in this game because there are no continues. It's a one and done situation, hence the difficulty. That said, we have the tips to offer you so that you keep that controller in your hands throughout the duration of your playthrough. If you ever do die, there is a sort of hidden continue or password screen which you can access on this screen. And let's go to Fluff early on to find out how to do just that, Fluff. To reach the password screen from the title screen, press A eight times, then B eight times, then input a location name to jump to that point in the game. If you want to beat this game fast, the final area can be accessed by inputting Castle N as one word. All right, good luck, Fluff. And you know you can go online to find all the the password location codes that you can input to get to the different sections and catch up wherever you did die, if that was the case. But you're not going to die because you have today's class. Let's run the intro and get started. Alright, we're going to start a new game right here by pressing start. And if we get a little context, it's Jerusalem, 1194 AD, third year. The Crusade in the Arab Dungeons at sunset. As we take a look at the controls for, uh, actually our friend Peter's in quite a bit of distress. Let's uh, liberate him first, kill this guy who's torturing him. Then we'll take a look at the controls. Um, rule number one, if you're a torture guy in 1194, don't leave an accessible, freely available sword when you have a prisoner just up and walking around, so. All right, so let's take a look at the controls now. Nothing too complicated, attack with B or A, depending on what your hand your uh, weapon is in. We could pause the game with select, and then if we hit start, we bring up more of a menu to uh, where we have a few actions. We can go into our inventory, which we'll do in just a bit. Right now, we want to talk to Azim and let him join our group so we can have some more firepower. He also lets us know that there is a key up here. This will give us a chance to go into our menu with Start, click A on Search, and then I just like to B out of that menu and then pick up anything that you find with A on the ground. We're going to swing our sword at this guy, and we're going to go to Gary for our first boss battle of Robin Hood. Gary? It's Scary Gary's Boss Beater. All right, the first boss in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. I'm just gonna call him Axe, dude. The strategy here, well, the strategy for these uh, in-person fights like this is very simple later on when you have kind of an obstacle in the room like this table. The problem with Axe, dude, is he doesn't jump on the table like other people. He just keeps swinging his ax. So what I like to do is stand between uh, the two tables and just kind of trap him at one sword's length maybe a bit further back so that when he moves forward, he's gonna get stabbed if you just keep stabbing. Readjust as necessary, but keep pinning him back. You'll take him down. It works very well in this first battle. Uh, thank you, Gary. Excellent strategy when you can't go with the normal strategy we'll be using later, like you said. Grab the torch. We're gonna talk about items in a little bit with Blaze, but first, we're gonna search here to get to the secret passage. Now we're in the kind of catacombs beneath the dungeon as we take a look at the Briggs notes now. First and foremost, above all else, level up early. I actually recommend leveling up to level three right here while we're in these catacombs. Uh, there's a lot of dudes and uh, it's, they just keep coming and it's relatively easy to kill them. They'll drop a lot of uh, healing items 
things like that so you can keep on top of your health but it's generally a good way of uh, doing it and then get to level four later on in the game just through the course of killing additional dudes and you should be good for the entirety of the game at that point um we're gonna grab these three little essences here which give you some health blaze is going to talk about these later as well but we're gonna skip ahead now i'm gonna do a bit of grinding you see each soldier gives you a uh, two experience so i think we need about 100 for the first level and then it goes up kind of incrementally from there but but um we're gonna skip ahead i'm gonna show you an area that i like down here this is a uh, generally a safe spot just keep stabbing enemies will kind of come in try to squeeze through it's a little too narrow for them just take them out pick up all the meat any apples they drop bandages things like that but uh yeah so we're gonna head out this way the other briggs notes know where you're going we're gonna talk about that and lastly keep the uh the, the chicken legs out of duncan's hands keep it on his inventory we'll talk about that more as we get into it later but Every now and then you'll get one of these top-down battles, which is actually pretty cool. We can uh, switch our character by hitting start here, but I recommend always staying as Robin because he's the one we need to keep alive. Every now and then uh, an arrow guy will pop out and he'll just decimate your crew, so you need to be careful. It's alright if everybody else dies, it's just again, Robin's the one that needs to survive at all times. Um, in this case, it's been predetermined that Peter's not going to survive past this battle so he's gonna die he's gonna give us something to give to his sister Maid Marian he's gonna slow the uh, guards down as long as he can I'm not really sure what he can do he's bleeding out as it is but let's listen to Azim he's the voice of reason right now let's get the heck out of here head north get some bread <laughs> while Peter's dying behind us get a nice loaf of bread and you'll be in the forest now, ten months later apparently, back in England. You can talk to people generally just by walking up to them. Occasionally you'll find someone who you can't reach, so in which case you need to go into the menu and select the talk command. But uh, yeah, Sheriff of Nottingham, he's uh, not a nice man. We're going to have to smack him down. Again, you can pick up items just by hovering over them and... Walking over and tapping A, we're getting some arrows here, which we'll use later. Here's a key. Some more arrows right here. Most of the game is going to take place in this kind of uh, system right here. This still top-down, but just walking around forests and things like that. You'll notice you kind of tend to bounce off of things when... Uh, that's our cue to head north. Don't go west. Otherwise, you'll run into a battle that never ends. that will just keep repeating, so... Come on up here, and we'll find Guy of Gisborne. He's very cocky. Thinks he's gonna take us down. So there's one of those arrow guys I was talking about. So all of the uh, other characters that you're not controlling at the time... I mentioned you can switch between them, but... Anyone you're not controlling will just kind of... They don't use a whole lot of common sense. They'll walk straight into a line of arrows and die very quickly, so you do want to prioritize those arrow guys and take them down as quickly as possible. And we chased Guy of Gisborne. Grab ourselves a bow now. If you're too full up on items, then you may need to drop and or eat some stuff. See right here. Gonna get some health back from that leg of meat. There's the ring that uh, we got from Peter can't wear the ring we can hold it still doesn't count as wearing it necessary but it gets it out of our inventory down here at least if nothing else now we can pick up the bow and the apple and we got that key from earlier we can go into our inventory and then drag it over to the use command right here and you'll find something in the potion it'll just be on the ground once we come out of our menu here nice Again, Blaze is going to talk about these in just a bit once we have a chance. Just a lot happening early on. See so here we have to talk to this kid in the tree. His dad is John Little. 
familiar name. I'm sure we'll run into him a little bit later. Now we can head to the west. Picking up all the stuff folks have dropped along the way. Every now and then you'll notice when you kill someone, the uh, they'll leave a body behind which you can search and typically they'll have something you can find. These are not all that good, but uh, eventually you might get to the point where you just decide it's not worth it. Now we're back at Robin's family home right here, his castle, which uh, looks like it's in disrepair. Seen better days, Azim just chalking it all up to evil forces. Why not? And I think that's our father, unfortunately. Yeah. And he uh, is not responsive. That's a bummer. Let's see if we can't find out what's going on in here. I hate these uh, dog enemies or whatever they are. They're annoying to have to fight. They're a little uh, difficult to line up the attacks with, but fortunately they're not too prevalent in this game. You can see some bandages there. We'll talk about the healing items in a moment. Keep an eye on your health when you get too low. You definitely want to pop some... Maybe a turkey leg or some bread. Maybe an apple. Um, even one of those uh, kind of essence... The yellows or the reds. Some enemies pack a punch. Just sounds like a generic bit of advice right there that I'm saying, but no, really. Uh, some enemies can get essentially critical hits on you, which can be very costly and kill you if you're, you know, remotely low on health. So make sure you keep your health generally above 50 at all times, at the very least. And here's our friend Duncan. He's very excited to see us, but he's uh, not telling us too much about our dad. Yeah, why didn't, uh, if you were here, why didn't you cut down our dad? And Azim uh, pointing out that they took his eyes. There you go. Guy of Gisborne. I already hated that guy. Now I hate him a bit more. Alright. Don't take that advice. The, uh, the medallion is terrible in terms of armor. We'll talk about armor in a moment as well. But, uh... First things first, we're not going to need to wear that just yet, but let's uh, let's see what Duncan has in his inventory now. You can see hitting left and right on the arrow keys, we can go to different members of our party. No one else needs any health, by the way. It's all about Robin. If they die in a battle, it's not that big of a deal. Give Azim the uh, bow and arrow for now. And now we have the, the Loxley chain. We'll check Duncan's inventory later, and you'll see that, uh, alright, there we go. So we're now at level 4. That's probably the last level that I think that you technically need in this game. You can wear the best armor at level 4 and all that. But anyway, while they're burying Robin's father, let's finally get an overview on the different healing items in this game with Blaze. Alright, let's talk about the health replenishing items you will find in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, going from least effective to most effective in replenishing your health. Now, I want to point out that each of these items, aside from the, the essences at the bottom, uh, they will all give you kind of a varying amount of health back. I've put it in terms of, you can see right here, the bandages, seven health. Generally, it's about plus or minus three on either side of this. So, you know, with the bandages, you might get about four or ten. It's kind of randomized. Then the apple, we average around 12 health back. The loaf of bread, 17 health. The leg of turkey, 22 health. Duncan loves to equip this, keep that in mind. I think the professors mentioned this, or he will later. And then you have the red and the yellow, which give you 50 and 100 health back, respectively. Just note that the red also gives you a temporary speed boost. So, stock up on these, use them, and break glass emergency situations and all the rest just eat them as necessary all right thank you very much blaze good advice definitely prioritize your inventory space for those um after a while there's a good number of those in this game so inventory space depending on how many members you have in your party at once 
I think at one point you max out at maybe five people in your party. Certainly four is the average, I would say, but eventually, uh, even then, inventory spaces can be somewhat at a premium, so we want to prioritize the stuff that gives you more health back. So you'll have a nice supply to draw from if you should ever need it. This door is locked. I don't know that we can ever open that door, actually. It's coming the back here. Yeah, but no, I'm looking for the goods. I'm trying to trying to burglarize this place a little bit before we talk to Marion. It's kind of in the name. Robin Hood. We, uh, we steal... Well, I just want to steal healing items. Here we go. As I said, plenty of them to go around. You should have a nice stockpile by the end of the game. Unless you're just... being a, uh, a human punching bag. Which it's easy to do in some cases. You can get your health drain very quickly. And I suppose that's... Ma it's supposed to be Marion. There's no reason to wear... And there he's holding the uh, turkey leg there. Oh, Duncan. Let's see if we can't give him a, a dagger or something. Maybe not the smartest idea to give a blind man a weapon, but... He's got to get more mileage than a loaf of bread or a turkey leg. But I always thought that was kind of cruel from the developers. <laughs> Placing that turkey leg in the blind man's hand as his weapon. You need to keep an eye on him later on in the game. There's going to be a point where he's going to leave the party and anything he had in his inventory is going to disappear. So you have to be careful about that. We'll let you know before it happens. But, uh... Yeah, every now and then he'll swap out what he has in his inventory. Grab this armor right here. If you can't pick it up, you either have too much stuff in your inventory like we do right here or you're just not at a level high enough to pick it up um, so that could be the case as well I think you need to be level three to rock that particular armor and we'll get an overview of the, the various armors in this game as soon as we escape the castle here pop this on for Robin you see our defense goes from 6 to 12 not too shabby. So we're going to head west now, and you're going to hit one of these intersections, and it's just going to be a... Oh, man. Yeah, these guys. You can see how quickly your health can just drop with these crossbow guys. The only good thing about them is that they can uh, shoot their friends, which is very realistic. They can kill their friends. Some friendly fire. Anyway, exit the building. Pull out the saddle that you picked up inside or that she gave to you and then use it next to the horses be very careful at this point in the game a is to jump here push to the right immediately and jump over each of these rocks if the guards catch you or if you hit one of the rocks i think it's a game over so be very careful and again use the uh, the password system if you need to catch back up to where we are in the game at this point those guys up top would be like, hey, can we get on your path? There's a substantially more rocks up here, and I don't think we have a shot at Robin anyway. Alright, but if you make it through, you'll be in the haunted Sherwood Forest. Taking our chances. We're becoming ghosts ourselves. I'm paraphrasing. But uh, note the route. This is we're generally going to show you the fastest route through each of these forests. Um, they're not quite mazes. That'd be too grandiose a term. But you know, there's certainly a fastest way to cut through here. So we're going to head up here, and before you talk to that's actually John Little there on the log. Cut to the right here and come all the way down and zigzag back and forth and grab that healing item right there. And we have a lot at this point. Just gonna need to eat all the perishable stuff at this point just to clear out room in our inventory. It's also usually a good rule of thumb to uh, get your health as high as possible before you do one of these fights. But then again, we got Gary. That's all that really matters, especially for this battle. He's got a great tip for you. 
So, uh, John Little's trying to nickel and dime us to pay the, the troll toll, and if we ain't got no tolls, we ain't got no rolls. I'm kind of combining a few references there. A little always sunny, a little men tights. I like how cocky he is. I'm going to enjoy this. Scary. Oh, it's from John Little, also known as Little John. Or at least after this fight, he will be. Uh, so we like to stand to the left of the middle of the rock, just where it dips down. Wait for John Little to jump off of the log, and then he'll be trapped between your sword and the log. He'll be stabbing or swinging his bow above you. Just keep stabbing him in the legs and his crotch area. He will go down very quickly. Try it out. Very satisfying. Hope John got all the kids that he wanted already to this point, because I don't think he's going to have any more after that. John Little, or should we call you Little John? Hilarious. Best sorts work he's seen in a long time, the way we just repeatedly stabbed him in his private parts. Like how quickly Robin shows his dominance over this guy. All right, so we're, our party's coming together. It's us, Azim, Blind Man Duncan, and now John, uh, Little John. And we're back here in the camp. And uh, it's cool, the camp is going to develop over the course of the game. It's going to be a few missions. We're going to come back and forth, but we'll check that out once we get back. In the meantime, we're going to start with a sequence of missions, one after another, from the camp. This first one we need to break up the, the wedding of the evil Baron. Marrying someone against their will, so we'll see what we can do about that. And while we're doing that, and showing you the best course to take, let's go to Blaze with an overview on the different armors of this game. Alright, let's talk about the armor you will find in Robin Hood Prince of Thieves. Now the actual amount of defense which they will give you will vary depending on your level and factors like that. So instead of getting into specific numbers, let's just talk about which one is the worst, which is the best. Uh, we start off with the leather armor, which is good, better than nothing. Secondly, we get the chain armor, which you can only pick up and wear if you are level three or higher. And then the Loxley armor, level four to wear. Prioritize, give the best armor always to Robin. He's the only one that matters. And uh, then we have the chain, which provides no uh, protection whatsoever, but it will get you into Marion's pad. And then finally, we have the cloak, which is an item very late in the game. Helps you avoid battles outside the castle. Robin Hood incognito with the cloak. All right, good luck, Blaze. As we have another top-down battle, you can see somebody already bit the dust. We got a Zeme working that bow, though. That's pretty cool. Got some more chest keys. Note that the, uh, the, it's easy to miss, but that little entrance to the right, once we were in this place, to get to the, uh, the Baron's, the upstairs of the Baron's place, this is the note that we need. And we're gonna deliver this to the, the Baron. Read it and weep. Bust up his wedding. Mind the arrow guy. It's just north here. I almost feel bad for the Baron. What does he have? Three friends? It's like three guests here. He probably threatened them. Or bought them. That's right, we got the letter. Defend yourself with Gary. Oh, speed right, the Baron! So this is where we can first use our table trick quite effectively. Uh, just stand at the bottom of the table. You gotta exercise some patience here, but if you stay there, when he gets on the table, just keep stabbing. He'll back up and, you know, kind of randomly uh, in a pattern come towards you and move back. You wish he would just stand there, but you just keep stabbing his ankles, but he, he moves around. Eventually, you will take him down. Just exercise some patience. And, uh, you've broken up a wedding. Good job. Alright, thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, it really is all about the patience. Uh, which I don't have right now. So let's go to Fluff for another Fluff fact about Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Fluff? Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves is quietly one of the best games based on a film adaptation for the NES. 
It was developed by Sculptured Software, who developed a variety of games for the NES, including Monopoly, Clue, and several sports games with LJN as the publisher, like Roger Clemens' MVP Baseball and a handful of WWF games. They even adapted successful games like Doom and Mortal Kombat to the Super Nintendo before they were acquired by Acclaim, where they now exist as Acclaim Studios Salt Lake City. Sheesh. Not a Eve laugh at the, uh, the guest's reaction to the whole thing. Funny thing is, they say that before or after you break up the wedding. Same as this person. They, uh, have no awareness of what's going on around them. You can skip that gold coin. The only purpose gold has in this game is to pay off a weapons master a little bit later on, and I don't even know if you need the money. I think it's impossible to not have the money at that point, but I feel like they meant to put more into the game in terms of uses for the money, but I don't know. Whatever, so... Just don't go out of your way to pick up any money. And, uh... Yeah, just exit back out the way you came in. Let's deliver the good news. You can see the camp starting to come together. I think after the next mission, we'll be able to actually go in some of the, uh, the tree houses that we've built. We have our next mission. They always give you a little... briefing. Hunting down the giant boar. Alright, this is a good one. Note the route right here. I'm not going to stop off to get some band-aids I noticed on the bottom there. I will stop off to get that for a cool 100 health back when I need it. Notice there's lots of baby boars running about. I think, hey, they're pretty big. Just wait. So we cut up here and then to the left, and this is the wild boar. So a little trick right here. Come over to where you see the skeleton and search a handful of times. You're gonna find bandages, some gold, most importantly, the Loxley bow and the Loxley armor. So search four times, and then just use the take function. The game will still be paused, and now we can actually go into our inventory and just very casually, <laughs> calmly equip all this stuff while the board's just very, uh, very patiently giving us our time. Wants it to be a fair fight. I certainly appreciate that from the, the wild boar. You can use an item on the eye icon to see which it is, as the the Loxley bow looks just like the normal bow, but anyway. Gary, what can you tell us about taking down the giant boar? Boss beaters. All right, the giant boar. I like to lure the boar to uh, charge at you to the left, and then when he backs up, if you do it right like you're showing you right here, he'll get stuck in the wall, and then you just stand back, whip out that Loxley bow that the professor showed you you could pick up, and just start firing at him. Three arrows each time you fire, does 20 damage each, you'll take him down before you know it. Well done. Alright, thank you very much, Gary. Excellent way to take down the giant boar without taking a single hit. That's why we love those boss beaters. No need to waste arrows at this point. Pop it back in our inventory. And we're gonna head back out the same way we came in once again. In case you don't remember, this is the fastest way to get out of here. Again, there's a few more items scattered about, but nothing of consequence. Typically, we're, we're showing you where to get the the red and the yellows that you need. So now you can see we can climb these ladders next to the trees, and in some of them, you'll find items like arrows, or more importantly, let's try this top right one here. There we go, nice. Just a freebie. <laughs> yeah, if you try to leave camp without your next mission, they will yell at you. You'd think you could just kinda leave camp with the vague intentions of robbing from the rich and, you know, giving to the poor, or promising to give to the poor at least, but... Anyway. So I guess we had a woodcutter missing this time. And we have more elixirs to pick up along the way, at least one, I think a red one. There we go. Inventory should be shock full of these things by now. We haven't had to dip into them too much. That's also the beauty of leveling up to three or four early on in the game. Grab another elixir right there. 
And what do we, we just definitely drop any notes at this point. Don't need those. That's the drop icon right there. Band-aids are relatively useless. For a laugh, you can try to eat the band-aids and they will shout at you. You cannot eat the band-aids. We don't need any more keys at this point in the game. For what it's worth. Duncan hoarding the turkey legs. Some habits die hard, I suppose. You can see that crazy range that you get on those healing items like Blaze was talking about earlier. So it dead ends there. We need to uh, circle around the, the trees here. Let's go down to the right. And there's our missing woodcutter. Explore the well. So we need a certain item to explore said well. The woodcutter had a letter on him. Anything else? No, just the remains of the woodcutter. Alright, so let's try to clear out these white tigers, or whatever they're meant to be. Take a look at that note by selecting it from our inventory. And then, uh, you know, just for a laugh. <laughs> we are awful. Alright, let's have Robin read it. Let this be a warning. Or Tiana. Hmm. Actually, I kind of appreciate that detail that if you try having Duncan read it, it will not let you. It's just little things like that. We head over here and grab the rope. And, you know, let's get an overview of some of the items in the game as we drop into this uh, well right here with Blaze. All right, let's talk about some of the uh, just different ability items that you can pick up that have different purposes, different uses. So first, we get very early on this torch, which allows you to see in caves. Make sure you hold on to this. Secondly, we have the chest key. As far as I can tell, there's only one chest in the entire game, but there are many chest keys. Go figure. And the chest occurs fairly early on in the game, so whatever. Just something to keep in mind. You have the saddle, which was is used for riding the horse at two different points in the game. And then we have the rope, which is used for getting in and out of wells. And finally, we have the, uh, the water skin, which we can use at one particular moment late in the game for a mission to, uh, to heal the members of your camp. But uh, all very specific items, which are generally available when you need them later on at different points in the game. All right, thank you very much, Blaze. As we saw the credit list in that last uh, cell in the dungeon. Why, well, there's an intricate dungeon built at the bottom of this well. How does that make sense? Why, they're built-out cells and everything? Doesn't seem like the most accessible dungeon, but... Anyway, we're not here to dissect Nottingham's strange dungeon well crossover system that they have going on. So this is more Tiana. Sheriff's evil witch associate. And yeah, that's an unbeatable boss at this point. But don't worry, it'll get its, its, is, whatever it is. But yeah, we're going to smack it later once we have the right weapon. Mind all of the, uh, the well pigs and rats and snakes and everything that's hanging out down there. And then just backtrack once again, same way we came in frustrating sometimes the, the bouncing off of trees and things like that we just would not make that sound that's not how that would react but so I got a little turn around up here basically northeast to backtrack out camps looking good still coming along Mary needs to see us immediately how what where have you been how did you hear that weren't you with us where are you getting your information from, Duncan? We'll head back out the same way we came in. Once again, bounce off some soldiers. I'm not sure that's how that would, uh... Not sure that's how that would happen. <laughs> Run into their sword to say, no thank you, bounce right off. As we, uh... Guess we can't just... Wait, what? Oh. 
I thought we were looking right there. Yes, here she is. Take this dagger, alright, this is an important weapon. The druid's dagger. So very important. Do not give this. She should have mentioned this, Marion, but uh do not give this dagger to Duncan. Doesn't matter right away if he has it, but later on. And it may have defaulted into his inventory, depending on, you know, if everybody else's inventories are full. Possibly. But, uh... Just a random chess key. It's just junk at this point. Like I think Blaze said, there's only one chest in this game. And there's a whole bunch of chest keys. It's a little odd. And the key is very early on, too. We'll swap those things around a little bit later. Back at camp where they doesn't look like they've made any more progress since we last. What do we got now? Alright. About time we're about to get... I was going to say arguably, but probably the best weapon in the game. We'll bring in Blaze to finally talk about the various weapons of this game once we grab it. But uh, hey, there's Friar Tuck. He's going to be our fifth member. I think we'd be at five with him. So this is the guy that killed our dad and stole his sword. What are we going to do about that? Well, I know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna call Gary. Boss beaters. Alright, Guy of Gisborne. We want to stay to the left or right of the rock and just keep stabbing. He'll jump on top of the rock and he'll just keep stabbing him, knocking him back. Just keep repeating it. Gotta exercise some patience once again, but it's not quite as bad as a, as a uh, table fight. But uh, this is the basic strategy. Every time you fight someone in the wilderness when there's a rock to use at your advantage. Good tip there, Gary. You always use your surroundings to your advantage. Like the Jackie Chan of Sherwood Forest. It's safe, but it's very boring, this battle. It's funny, it's like all been building up to this. This is the guy that killed our dad. He wants some sweet, sweet revenge. Very dramatic moment, climactic moment, and this is how it goes down. I like his outfit. I'd trade clothes, if I could. Anyway, this might take a while, so let's go to Fluff for another Fluff fact about Robin Hood. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, was heavily featured in and made the cover of the July 1991 issue of Nintendo Power Magazine. The only problem with this, it predated the game's November 1991 release by several months. MP, just trying to build up the hype. Thank you, Fluff. You got it. Man, I want to win a trip to pick up my... SNES. Do they still make you pay for the SNES? Just referring to a contest I saw on the cover of that issue. I remember having that uh, issue. My brother started the subscription, older brother, before I did. Probably laid the groundwork for uh, a few of the strategies that I still rely on for this series in a couple cases. Alright, let's just go on the offensive there. Get that last stab in. Can't be hiding behind a rock. That one was for our dad. He explodes. Heck yeah. Alright, so now that we have our family sword, let's go to Blaze for an overview on the weapons of Robin Hood. Alright, let's talk about the many weapons you will find in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. First off, there are two different types of daggers. One which just does two damage, and then we have the eight damage Druid Dagger. This is a very important item. The professor's going to mention this as well later on. Do not give this to Duncan, a party member in your party later on, who will leave. Don't give him anything that you... Well, the professor's going to point out when you want to clean out his inventory uh, very late in the game. But this is a very important item. You need this to beat a boss later on, as Gary's going to explain. But uh, yeah, make sure you hold on to that. Secondly, we have a number, a variety of swords. We have short sword, long sword, claymore. The, the damage on these swords ranges from 6 to 12 damage, depending on the sword. Then we have the Loxley sword, our dad's sword. 
20 damage per stab. And then we have the bow, and then the Loxley bow. The Loxley bow does three shots. Each shot does, by my estimation, about six or seven points of damage, but, uh, but there you go. There's also a, uh, a mace, which you can get later on. I think it does 25 damage. We're not going to be covering it, but uh, you don't need it. It's very heavy as well, not very practical as far as weapons go. Stick with the Loxley sword when you get it. But there you are, the, the basic major items in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. All right, thank you, Blaze, and excellent timing, actually. This is when we want to clean out Duncan's inventory, taking off all the good armor, weapons, we'll leave him with some band-aids, we'll leave him with the sword. That'll make for an interesting trip for him to go back with Marion. But yeah, after you get your family sword back, you're going to see Marion standing here when you get back to camp. And they don't even give you the choice. Duncan's just going to leave the party, and everything he had is going to go bye-bye. So if he had the druid dagger when he leaves, then uh, you're kind of SOL. You think Marion would be like, oh, Duncan, Robin really could have used that as we're getting killed by that uh, giant animatronic-looking skeleton that Mortiana had. But uh, anyway... Just keep that in mind right there. I think there's one more tree house we haven't been in yet. There we go. Grab one more elixir. And now that uh, Duncan's gone, let's see, we've lost some inventory space. Even though we got uh, Friar Tuck at about the same time. So who do we got now? We got Azim, Friar Tuck, Little John, and Robin. Okay. So we're still four-person team. Just for like that one second, we had five people for that walk back to camp. All right. Well, let's see what the uh, mer the emergency is next. See, they added little connectors now to the different tree houses. Pretty cool. All right, so now we got to convince a weapons master to join up with our merry men and teach us their ways. If you ask me, maybe Robin should just lead the men, teach him the uh, stand behind any item on the battle screen and stab at their crotch and or feet. Maybe he just doesn't have time because he's doing everything else ever, but uh, I think it's generally northwest. He's got a little camp and a clearing north of this lake here. There he is. For what it's worth, you can pop into that well with your rope, and there is a red elixir, I believe. We're not going to be going in to get it, but if you need an extra elixir, it's right in there. And once again, ducking behind this rock right here. I don't mind taking a little extra damage this time. We have plenty of elixirs. At some point, we got to start using them. I think we're going to beat this game with, you know... 8 to 10 elixirs burning a hole in our pants. We can use them on the honeymoon, I suppose. Spoiler there. Apologies if you didn't realize this game was going to have a happy ending. Where Robin and Marion were going to end up together. Ah, oh, this sucks. Alright, let's go back to Fluff for yet another Fluff fact about Robin Hood. Uh, this time, Fluff, tell us about the movies of Robin Hood. There have been dozens of major film adaptations of Robin Hood over the last century, dating all the way back to the silent film era of the 20s. Many actors have put their stamp on the famous folk hero, including Sean Connery, Russell Crowe, Errol Flynn, and my personal favorite, Cary Elliott. Wait! I get another shot! Our game follows the plot of the movie of the same name, which was also released in 1991. While the film was a big success at the box office, most critics took issue with Costner's attempt to not even attempt an English accent. Robin of Loxley. If you say so, Kevin. Thank you very much, Fluff. Good stuff. Didn't even put a dent into this guy. The weapons master. You see, we've given up on the strategy at this point. Just street fighting. Pound some elixirs. We can always retreat behind the rock. When your health gets too low, to get a couple more licks in before we go back on the offensive. Even though we have the best sword in the game equipped right now, it sure doesn't seem to be doing that kind of damage to this guy. 
Maybe he's got the Loxley armor too. Maybe they did a limited run of the Loxley armor. Alright. At this point. There we go. Is he gonna go on and on about how he's never seen sword work quite like that? <laughs> the way you hid behind a rock. There's your 200 gold pieces that he needs. We've got hundreds of those. Now we're down to 379, so yeah, just not even trying to get gold in this game. There's the uh, water skin that Blaze was talking about. You actually don't even need to pick this one up. There's going to be one later, shortly after this, with the mission that we actually need. So we'll eat this elixir. Get 100 health back, just like that. Patch ourselves up a bit with the bandages. Water skin. Uh, I think we need one more. One more slot. Have we got any bandages, any food? Or is it all elixirs and weapons at this point? Someone could be wearing this. Give this to Friar Tuck. There you go, my friend. A little more defense. So you can last an extra second before you get mowed down by a line of arrows. But yeah, once again, you can pop in that well if you need a red elixir or you'd like one. It's pretty much all that's in there. A couple rats. As we return to camp, one more time. These forests. So many dead ends. See, I'm falling to it right now. They just took the same basic look and replicated about eight times with slightly different paths each time. So it's enough to... Enough to confuse you. Even me. Even Professor Briggins. Alright, back in camp looking pretty good. The flu. Alright, so we need the healing water this time. This one isn't too bad. Because once we uh, get on this next screen, it's just north. I recommend using the Loxley bow. It's not quite a boss battle. Just pull out your uh, Loxley bow. Make sure you get the right one. Is the Loxley bow just a regular bow? Since we have hundreds of it, well, 147 arrows, we're doing just fine on that. That massive sword that's running into our eyeball, actually, that seems like a concern. Not trying to be the new Duncan in this crew. So just... You can keep your distance here. These, their arrows actually don't do too much. I think it's interesting, I like, you know, the idea, what are these creatures supposed to be? Never really just looked at them. They are, they're interesting to say the least. I guess those are like, uh, stinger tails that they're firing out. They just happen to look like arrows. Anyway, there's only three of them. They go down pretty quickly. See, we took some shots from them, but didn't do too much. There is a uh, water skin just to the north of this pond right here, but being that we picked one up in that last... Or it looks like a, a potato wearing a Batman mask or something, I'm not really sure. They say it's a water skin. Or a flask, so fill that up. Use it there, take it back to camp. And it's gonna heal everybody up. going to save a village from the Baron. One last showdown with the Baron, who's not that tough of a baddie to begin with. Took down Guy of Gisborne. Don't think we're going to be too, too rattled by the Baron round two. Might go a bit faster this time without the table, just using rocks. I don't know. Man, I hate arrow guys. There's a lot of them around here. That's part of why I like to uh, do the grinding early on in the, uh, the the dungeon catacombs because no one at that point has arrows and they seem to appear with more frequency than these guys do. It's just safer. Plus they all give you the exact same amount of experience. It's not like enemies later in the game give you more experience. Although it is nice to have the little extra range of the uh, 
the Loxley sword, ridiculous as it is, <laughs> how long it is. So we've taken a lot of hits without actually dropping any health. The hits are all over the place. It's sort of like the uh, the healing items. You never know how much you'll get back or how much you'll lose in terms of weapons when you take a hit. You crit, uh, they can get in crits or do next to nothing. As we have another top-down battle right here. Not sure who that arrow guy's firing at. I guess he's programmed to try to just as long as you're lined up with him, he's gonna take his shots, even if there's a giant house in the way. Made short work of them. More gold that we can't use, another chest key that we can't use. And there's a woman in one of these houses on the far left who will uh, sell you a chest key for 20 gold. You can buy that if you want, just help her out. But literally, no more chests in this game as far as I know. We have another sword fight coming up, so not the worst idea to pound a couple of these elixirs if you need them right now. Just clearing out some inventory space. We have 175 health we top off at. I think each level we get another 25. Mirrors our experience level. Yeah, we've been a real thorn in your side, Baron, and now we're gonna kill you. The ultimate disrespect. Don't mind taking a bit more damage this go around. See, when he's on the rock, it's not as fun. Or when he's in the, that spot on the rock, I should say. When you're coming in from the left. Being on the right side gives you a bit more cover. This guy seems to have less defense or health than the, uh, the weapons master did. The Baron. There you go. <laughs> Jumped on my sword and died. We also just acknowledge how much useless or energy that we are needlessly expending by doing these crazy jumps and everything and spins and just completely unnecessary. Anyway, he's got nothing on him of value. Nothing in general, actually. I guess we're slight. All oh, right, I forgot we took that. I'm gonna say we downed a couple elixirs, but I didn't think they weighed that much to give us that much of a speed boost. That's the benefit of traveling late, but uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's nice having that super speed. Robin on the ye old cocaine. Alright, this should be the final mission around here at this point. They took Marion. How'd you find- again! I get that you're blind, and I get that Marion is the major concern right now, but how'd you find your way back- Oh. Uh, unfortunately, he miraculously found his way back to camp. But the other side of that coin is that, uh, yeah, he led everyone back. All the sheriff's men. Someone just went down. That might have been Duncan. Not sure. I can't keep track of who wears what on this screen. I just know who we are. Just post up here in case any more arrow guys show up. Can I get around this tree? Nope. <laughs> Being attacked at home where it hurts. Switch my guy here. Save us a little bit of time. I like Azim's attack pattern. He does like kind of a wide swing with his sword, the guy in the white. Looks cool. I don't think it affects anything differently, but it's weird. Even if we equip him with, you know, a knife or a sword, it doesn't matter. He always has that animation. All right, so let's get uh, out of here since they set our camp on fire. Thank you again, Duncan. So now we just make our way back to the burned down camp. You can pop into this guy's place to get some more, uh, yeah, I'm Robin. Thanks. Thanks for the support as you sleep. 
So grab that hood. Blaze talked about it earlier. You can use it to, uh, once we get to the, uh, the sheriff's place where they're going to hang some of our men, you can use it to sneak around, avoid a battle or two. Not a big deal, but if you're interested. You are in an old hut. I like that descriptive right there. Grab all this stuff. Anything else that we need at this point? Can we pop this on somebody? Everybody's wearing something at this point. Uh, let's... Don't even care. <laughs> That's how well we're doing in the elixirs right now. Like, I just, like that they just disappear if you get to that guy's hut, because they're not supposed to be on that portion of the screen. I think I'm pretty much just done at this point, trying to find items. Very realistic looking fire. Time for the final battle. Alright, let's do it. Yeah, let's rescue our friends who we maybe shared one word with. One more wood screen here. Pretty satisfying. I like that we get the experience for it too. Technically, he should get the experience and then maybe level up and... <laughs> that guy just said, you're a terrible shot and just destroyed him with a crossbow arrow. Just not really respecting anyone. Um, if you do the, the castle end cheat, I always used to do that one as a kid when I wanted to beat this quick. I say cheat, but you know, access. You can see how deadly these arrows are right here. It's, that's how very quickly your health can drop, so that's why you want to maintain at least 50 just in case. And then once you're, uh, once it's safe, definitely pound some elixirs or just bring up your menu right then and there. That's the beauty of being able to pause the game like that and pound some elixirs to stay in the game. Yeah, if you do the, uh, the castle end password, like Fluff explained at the beginning, it'll drop you in the final spot in the game, and uh, you'll uh, be on level 8, actually, so that would take a while to grind that. I don't recommend that. It's not necessary. What is necessary here is using our saddles again. You saw we just passed one. I just kept the one from earlier. Not sure how four or five, I guess five guys at this point are all on one horse, but there you go. No one's chasing us this time, so we can be a bit more cautious when it comes to jumping over these rocks, but I think it's the same thing. If we fall, it's over if you hit one of those rocks, so. You can come to a full stop if you, you know, just stop pushing to the right for what it's worth, but I'm trying to beat this in a timely fashion here, so. So you can pop on the cloak right now. This will keep you from... <laughs> I like that it's just localized, even with the hood, to his chest area. I'd like to see a better rendering of what that looks like. Supposedly you can use that cloak to get inside the castle without fighting this battle, but let's just do one last battle. As everyone's dead. <laughs> That's the only downside of not, uh... That's no, just the four of us. It's the only downside of not healing up your other party members, but... Why waste good elixirs on the likes of these people who are just gonna run blindly? No offense, Duncan, into a uh, whole swarm of dudes and... The, uh, the arrow storm that comes at them. But you take that out, that guy. And we're where the castle end password would drop you. Evil smell. So you can search and get some more elixirs at this point, but we're just gonna head to the right. There's gonna be one last top-down battle. No use saving any of these at this point. 
top off Robin Hood. Give health to anyone else if you are really overflowing in those things and you just feel like you need to get rid of them. Rear of the castle. By rear, she really means back and to the right. Yeah. <laughs> if that is where he was hiding, then I think we would just have to go home. Game over. This is where the the old cocaine is nice. Just breezing by a lot of these guards. Just basically keep going up and to the right. Eventually you'll hit an intersection where you'll have one last top-down fight. Right here. Here we go again. Yeah, I don't necessarily see the point in skipping any of these. It's fun. I like all the different, uh, you know, like if you were cloaking it up to keep a lower profile. <laughs> One cloak between you and your merry men, your four merry men. Or it's three in this case. But I love all the different looks they give you in this game, you know? There's these top-down battles. You get the side, like, sword battles. You get the horse. A uh, couple, you know, mini-games like that. A lot of different types of uh, gameplay in this game. So this is where we need the Druid Dagger, which we've been sitting on for half the game now. But I really hope you didn't give to Duncan. If you did, just do the other uh, password in the castle in at this point. No harm, no foul. You'll know it's not the right one if it's not doing the, uh, the zappy sound and lighting up when you swing it like a child's toy. We just drop that at this point. We don't need that knife. I guess Azim's got it right now. I forgot we gave that to him. Got scared for a second thinking that uh, Duncan still had it somehow, but not the case. There it is. Alright, just come up on... Yeah, I want the sheriff. By her, she means her animatronic skeleton. Just walk up and just keep stabbing. Nothing to it. You won't even get another attack in if you're turboing it. Keep smashing that B button or A button, whatever you have it equipped to, and down he goes, and she'll freak out. No! <laughs> Maybe don't make a weapon that can kill your otherwise invincible skeleton guy. It's my advice to you, except you had like a dragon heart thing going with that creature, so now that when it died, you died too? I'm not sure. Come to deliver your divorce. Robin's got some good lines. Taken from the film, actually. Touche, without the uh, accent. I was, we always just read that as touchy. <laughs> so one last table battle. You'd think the final battle in the game would be, you know, something we could bring in Gary for a, a fresh tactic or something, but no, just the same old table battle. Very embarrassing. I like this move. If you uh, if you hold up and tap A, you do this kind of like, I don't know what you want to call it, but if you have turbo mapped to A, you're using the turbo controller and you hold up and move around, he does like a, kind of like a train. It just moves around very uh, violently. It's hard to describe without showing it, but uh, let's finish this thing, man. Come on. No, you're not going to win. I know the table move. He's, he's like, come on, man. Can I do the table move on you? No, because I... I have patience. It's the perils of existing and being the... the final boss in a two-dimensional world. If this were Robin Hood Prince of Thieves 64 or Robin Hood Prince of Thieves 3D then uh, this would be a very different battle, but unfortunately for the sheriff, not the case. I'm going to say too, talking about the Prince of Thieves movie and uh, versus Men in Tights, which, you know, was a parody of it, came out a couple years later from Mel Brooks. It, uh, I think, I think they did much better with 
the casting, obviously, Carrie, but Amy Asbeck is Marion in uh, Men in Tights. Yeah, I was a, <laughs> I was a big fan when I was a, a small child. I think she's, uh, they did much better than, uh, I don't even, I can't even think of her name in Prince of Thieves. Not sure I ever saw Prince of Thieves, but... But in doing the research for this class, I do see that they pulled, you know, all the dialogue in this game, all of the subtitles that pop up and things like that, pretty much straight from the movie. So it really is a, a very decent adaptation, not just in being faithful to the material, but just a good game in general. Gasp! <laughs> yeah, I don't know if uh, Alan Rickman said gasp. All right. We mentioned it in the whiteboard at the beginning of this class, but you're about to witness the most awkward kiss in video game history. Get ready. <laughs> Who interrupts my wedding? I love that happy music, your king. Like whenever you find a, you know, a chicken leg on the ground or something. Just wanted to get that kiss in. Patrick Stewart also playing the king in Men in Tights. Upgrade right there. All right, here we go. <laughs> she looks nauseous as they don't even butt heads. Just the most awkward, strangest animated kiss in video game history. But there you go. If you hit start, the uh, ending will play again for what it's worth. So if you want to witness that awkward kiss again and again like my brother and I did as kids, feel free. But that's our time for today. That's the end of class. Thank you so much for attending today. Please leave a like on this video. It really does help us out. Leave a comment. Have you played this? Did you play this grown up? Have you played it recently? What do you think of it? Do you think it's underrated as well? Uh, certainly underappreciated and uh, maybe not as known as it should be. But uh, yes, if you have not subscribed, please do so. We really do appreciate it. We do one of these classes every single week. We would love to have you enrolled. Thank you to all my TAs today, and we'll see you next week in the same spot for next week's class. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and comment on this video, and click subscribe if you haven't already, as this seriously helps me to keep making great content for you. And check the description of this video to see what song is playing right now.